Hi there, welcome back to Daily Dose of Anime Recaps. In this episode, we'll be covering episodes 21 through 24 of Dragon Quest Dino Daibuken. In this series, we're joining the tiny hero Dai and his companions who were struggling through a brutal war with the Dark Lord Hadler and his Dark Legion commanders. We left off last time with the heroes enjoying an important victory in which Hadler was once again defeated, though this time we know that he's not away for good. At the same time, a strange conspiracy has been brewing with the Dragon League Legion Commander Baron at the heart of it. The next few episodes might illuminate this mystery more. Though, before we begin, make sure to become a subscriber and hit the bell button so you never miss an update from us. Episode 21, titled Mam's Decision, begins with Mam and Baduck trying to repair the magic bullet gun that Yvonne had left her. It was previously destroyed by a powerfully charged spell that released the Princess Leona from Flazard's ice spell, though her best efforts can't repair it. As this happens, a commotion outside draws Mam and Baduck to the the Lady Marin, who is being healed by Princess Leona's most powerful Fulhea spell. Amazed by Leona's abilities, Mam seems to feel inadequate in the face of the talented princess. Mam decides to find Madarif, who she thinks can repair the magic bullet gun. She finds him training Pop and Dai, and we suddenly see how quickly Pop is growing as a mage. Meanwhile, Madarif has Dai meditating to improve his concentration and focus, though Dai is annoyed that he isn't engaging in the same intensive training as his rival Pop. As Mam watches on on at the rest of her companion's training, Madarif's wisdom impresses on them all. Madarif then sneaks up on Mam, is about to grope her before she elbows him in the face. As she does this, Madarif reminds her of her father's strength, which seems to strike a deep memory inside Mam. We swiftly move on to a meeting between the princess, the heroes, and her council. They discuss their plan of action regarding the war, and Mam drops a huge bombshell on the group. She says that her plan is to be alone for a while, as without her magic bullet gun, she has nothing to bring to the party. Leona cold-heartedly agrees, suggesting that they're only going to encounter tougher enemies from this point forward, and someone who can't defend themselves is a liability. Mam decides that she must return to Romos to train in martial arts, which amusingly shocks everyone. Meanwhile, at the Sovereign Rock Castle, Hadler laments Flazard's death and Hyunkel and Crocodine's desertion. Without them, his dark army is halved in power. As this happens, a strange melody plays. It's that of the Reaper Flute and with it comes a strange flying creature, Piroro and the menacing-looking Kilvern, the personal assassin of the Dark King Vern. He undermines Hadler's command and pokes fun at Mistvern too. His introduction is bold and courageous, highlighting the sheer danger and confidence of Vern's own assassin. He even goes as far as to threaten Hadler's life if he fails to achieve victory against I, though this meeting is swiftly interrupted by the Dragon Master, General Baron, who claims it's now his turn to fight against I. We're now seeing Hadler's command undermined by Baron too, who claims that Hadler is keeping Baron away from Dai because the tiny hero is secretly a dragon knight. In Dragon Quest, dragon knights are a thing of legend, created from dragons and monsters and raised as humans. Their role in life is to preserve harmony and balance within the world. Kilvern then intervenes and stops Baron and Hadler from fighting between each other. He then takes out a key, the key of Viren, which he then uses to move Sovereign Rock Castle. After inserting the key into a mechanism, the entire castle begins to rumble, and the earth begins to shake. We cut to Mam saying her goodbyes to Dai, Pop, Gome, and Princess Leona. Leona tells of a god of martial arts who lives in the Romos Mountains. As Mam leaves, Pop seems sad that he never got to tell her how he felt about her. Leona tries to convince him to say something, and he chases after her. He catches up and offers to use Zoom to take her to Nail Village in Romos, though she then says that she's not heading home until the Dark Army is defeated. As they zoom away, Way, Pop crashes and they find out that they've arrived in the dark forest where they first met, as Pop's zoom spell only takes him to places that he has a powerful mental image of. He thinks that this is his chance to reveal his feelings to Mam, though she begins praising him for being nice to him. The romantic moment keeps brewing between the two, and Pop suddenly has become very emotional. Just before he's about to confess his feelings, he instead decides to say that she was his favorite companion ever, and they leave it at that, without the truth ever being said. Said. Pop decides that he can't reveal his feelings until he is as strong as she thinks he is. Meanwhile, Crocodile and Hyunkle are at the place that Sovereign Rock Castle should have been and are confused that it has moved from its normal position. They feel that something very terrible has happened. Meanwhile, we cut to a new scene in which a boat is destroyed by a giant made out of rocks, and we see that Sovereign Rock Castle is now treading water across the ocean. Episode 21 begins with Apollo and Marin hoping to join Dai's party as they wish to get stronger. 
Then Amy busts into the room and says that is her responsibility too. Leona then reminds them of their duty to protect the people of Papnica before revealing that she plans to travel with Dai. Dai then appears and requests from Leona that he gets a new sword, as his current steel broadsword is about to break. Leona then tells him about a huge department store where they can get anything they need, and Leona giggles knowing that they can visit her favorite department store. Meanwhile, Pop and his mentor are studying, when Madari finds a book with the dragon crest in it, confirming that Dai is in fact a dragon knight. He conceals this from Pop for reasons that we do not yet know. Madarif then pulls out some gifts for Pop, a sorcerer cape and shining staff alongside a belt. Madarif imparts more wisdom upon Pop and informs him of his responsibility to be there for Dai when he needs it. Just then, the balloon starts to take off and Dai and the princess head off to the department store alone. We find out that Pop is stowed away below the balloon, and Leona starts trash-talking him. Pop then rears his head angrily, and the group float away to the Bengarna country. We find out that it is an incredible safe place bolstered by economic and military strength. They arrive at the department's door and are immediately blown away by the sheer scale of it. Leona steps inside an elevator, and Di and Pop are shocked as they have never been inside one before. She buys them snacks shaped like slimes, and inside Pop finds a small metal, though he doesn't know what it means. Someone tries to buy the gold buckle from Pop, however it's impossible for him to remove, so he thinks he is cursed. Leona bankrolls Di and Pop, saying that they can buy anything with a certain limit. Di tries on a huge suit of armor, though it's virtually impossible for him to move in it. He even falls down the stairs wearing it due to its weight. They encounter Dragon's Bane, a sword capable of piercing even a dragon's hide being auctioned by antique sellers. Leona resolves that they have to buy the Dragon's Bane as it's the most powerful weapon out there. While they discuss buying it, they're accosted by a strange old woman and her granddaughter. Leona says that they are strange seers, and Pop finds the younger one cute. Merle, the granddaughter, senses many powerful monsters closing in on the country and in the next scene, we see a giant hydra appear from the ocean. Then Ben Garnet Kingdom defenses fire their weapons at the hydra. However, it's obvious that nothing is working. More dragons then appear, and we suspect that the Dragon Master General Baron might be on his way. Meanwhile, Leona fails to buy the dragon's bane after another buyer beats her in the auction. Just then, the department store begins to shake and the heroes look out and see five dragons and the hydra destroying the country. Someone then tells the buyer of the dragon's bane to fight the dragons, but he refuses as he's a coward trying to make money. Leona then says that they must go and fight to protect the people of Bengarna Kingdom. Pop steps up to the leadership role and tells Dai to fight the Hydra and for Leona to evacuate the people. Meanwhile, he heads off to fight the five dragons, which we soon see might have been a little out of his depth. He runs away, allowing the dragons to chase him so the civilians can escape. Meanwhile, Merle sees a young girl struggling to free her mother from collapsed rubble, and her grandmother tells her off for trying to help. Then, Merle proves her heroism as she runs to help. Perhaps we could see her join Dai's party at some point. Just then, the Hydra appears and threatens to burn Merle and the young girl with its fire breath, though Dai swiftly appears and dispels the attack with an air slash. The next episode begins with Dai confronting the giant Hydra, whilst allowing Merle to escape with the young girl. Dai's weapon is useless against the Hydra's tough dragon hide, and it's obvious how badly he needs the dragon's bane after his own sword shatters to pieces after hitting the Hydra, which constricts around him. Meanwhile, Pop has used an all-powerful spell to defeat the dragons. Though all his magic energy is spent, they all wake up moments later, and we see how strong they really are, though Pop is now unlikely to defeat them. The dragons now charge at the princess, and the bandit drops the dragon's bane sword. Just as one of the dragons is about to kill Leona, Dai bursts with blue dragon crest energy, and the sheer power tears the hydra holding him to shreds. Imbued with the dragon crest energy, he knocks out the dragon threatening Leona Leona with ease, and he picks it up by the tail and uses it to smash another dragon out of the way. His new dragon crest power helps him free the trapped civilians. Meanwhile, he goes up against the Hydra, head on, using his own strength and no weapon. The old seer woman confirms that Dai is a dragon knight, which surprises Leona. Dai then picks up the dragon's bane weapon, and even more energy glows around him, suggesting that he has an affinity for the weapon due to being a dragon knight. He uses it to stab the Hydra, which he then uses Zappalo 
Babylon, which fully destroys it. After defeating it, all of the civilians are terrified of him. Seemingly, his new power isn't normal for ordinary people to witness. Just then, a voice sounds from nowhere, and it's not a voice anyone's heard before. The voice taunts Dai. Then Kilvirn reveals himself and tells Dai that he was just there to observe his real self, and that the real Dragon Master will arrive soon. Then, the seer introduces herself as Nabara, and her granddaughter as Merle, and that Dai must be the fabled Dragon Knight of the Turan Kingdom, a country north of Bengarna known as the Mystic Country. Meanwhile, Yunkul tracks the Sovereign Rock Castle to the ocean, where its tracks have disappeared. Then a man appears weakened and tells Yunkul that the Carl Kingdom was defeated by the Dark Army, though he doesn't know which legion was responsible. Back to Dai, they've arrived at the Turan Kingdom, which is seemingly drab and empty. Nabara tells the heroes that the king forbade weapons and technology, and that everyone here is destined to live a life of simplicity, though this then weakened the country significantly. Nabara takes him to a shrine of the God of Dragons, which has the crest inscribed onto it. The legend tells of a person with a dragon crest who is a servant of the dragon gods with incredible power and responsibility, who could also destroy all of creation. Nabara tells Dai of a temple at the bottom of the lake that is said to contain the soul of the god of the dragon, and that any clues to Dai's identity will probably be in that lake. Dai then commits to go to the bottom of the lake, alone. Remembering his childhood, Dai appreciates how he was never rejected by the monsters for being a human, though humans won't accept him unless he is full human. The tiny hero dives in, and Pop is furious that he can't accompany him on this journey, though it only reminds us how strong their friendship is with each other. Inside the temple, Dai is shocked to find that there is air inside. Clearly, something mystical is at play. He is drawn to a room with a giant blue crystal, the Dragon Crystal, guardian of the temple. Dai asks the crystal who he is and what the circumstances of his birth are. The crystal then once again finally confirms that Dai is the Dragon Knight, and he asks if he's a human or a monster. The crystal then tells Dai that the Dragon Knight is the creation of three gods of dragons, darklings, and humans, and that he is neither fully dragon, monster, or human. Dai's then about to be told his purpose, before something intrudes into the temple and reveals himself as Dragon Legion Commander Baran. The crystal is then astounded that there are two dragon knights living during the same age, let alone in the temple together. Baran reveals he's not there to kill him, but instead to take his power for Dai to serve him, as they dominate the human world. Episode 24 begins with Hyunkle talking to the Carl Kingdom soldier, whose brother led the defense against Baran. The dragon commander swiftly killed him in one attack from his dragon crest, and Hyunkle found the body which has the dragon crest burned onto it. Meanwhile, Baran tells Dai of his purpose and the true nature of his creation to punish anyone who wishes to assert dominion over a race of people. Dai doesn't understand how Baran can serve Vern, and then they begin to fight. However, Dai's attacks are useless, and Baran uses his dragon crest to cast an ultra-powerful dragon beam attack that throws Dai from the water and back to his companions. Leona casts a full heal on Dai, and in the meantime, Pop steps up to fight Baran, though his most powerful spell doesn't even bother the Dragon Knight. Baran then says he's going to take Dai away, and he has every right to do so because Dai is Baran's son. Leona and Pop can't believe this, and Baran believes that the Dragon Crest is proof that he is his son. Dai's real name is Dino, and that the woman who gave birth to Dai is of no concern to the heroes. Meanwhile, Kilvirn and Hadler watch on by a spy, and Mistvirn reveals that the Dark King Viren is about to reveal himself to the group. Viren then appears, and his pressure and power is intense. He then questions the Legion commanders and demands to find out whether or not Dai is indeed a Dragon Knight. Viren also suggests that if Baran is successful, he can become a new Dark Commander. Back by the temple, Dai refuses to leave with his newly discovered father. Dai resolves to use the hero's greatest weapon to defeat Baran, Courage. Nabara then stops Merle from intervening, suggesting that Baran might not really be fully evil after all. Dai must defeat Baran with his biggest, most powerful attack. Though Baran pre-attempts this, he says that it can never work against him, and so Dai must request that the power of the dragons provide him with support instead. Dai casts an ultra-powerful Zapstrash, which Baran absorbs fully with his sword. Baran says that normally a dragon knight cannot control the power of the dragons until they are fully grown, which he will then prove with an equally powerful attack. Baran casts Giga Break, which is the most powerful attack we've seen so far and throws Dai far into the water. Crocodine then appears and pledges to intervene, though for the first time we see the Beast King shaking. Baran is immune to spells, so Crocodine's strength is the only thing that can hurt him. Baran then says that he is especially disappointed in 
Hunkel and Crocodine for siding with humans, and Crocodine says that Dai is the only thing that took him away from the darkness and towards the light. Baron remembers his wife before he prepares to annihilate Crocodine with the power of the dragon attack. Though Crocodine attacks before his axe is shattered by the draconic aura around Baron, the Beast King is thrown back with one attack before the episode ends. That concludes another episode of Daily Dose of Anime Recaps, and we end with the conspiracy surrounding Baron and Dai finally unfolding, and we find out the biological relationship between the two Dragon Knights.